Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel and another broadcast. My name is Paul, I'm a very happy member of Cocoon Anonymous and I live in Peterhead in Scotland. I'm really, really pleased to be joined today by Eve. Hello everyone, my name's Eve and I'm from England. Glad you're here Eve, thanks for joining us. And Ashley. Hi Paul, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, I'm Ashley. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting me, thank you. Glad you're here Ashley and Catherine. Hi, thank you for the invite, Paul. Um, my name's Catherine. I'm a recovered addict from Witness in the UK. Glad you're here to carry a message of hope, faith and courage to um, addicts everywhere. And, um, you know, today we're going to be taking a look through our basic text, a book called Alcoholics Anonymous. And there's around 50 broadcasts on this channel, folks. If you're still using drugs and you're looking for a solution, we have a solution. And there's lots of podcasts on this channel wherever you see this video posted on Skype or in the rooms or WhatsApp or YouTube, please feel free to reach out in the conversation below um, later on in this broadcast, which you can pause and rewind at any point. There'll be information about meetings um, and information about literature. So I'm really, really pleased that you've all come along today on the channel and we've each brought a portion of the big book that's particularly precious to us. Um, so we're each going to share on our particular portion and then we're each going to comment um, and share back and we're going to go around so without further ado uh, Eve I'm going to mute and hand it over to you. Thank you very much Paul. Okay um, like I said my name is Eve I'm a recovering addict from England um, I'm going to read one of my favorite parts which is page 66 to 67 of chapter how it works in the big book. So um I start this down the bottom of 66 to kind of the middle of 67. Um, we began to see that the world and its people really dominated us. In that state, the wrongdoing of others, fancied or real, had power to actually kill. How could we escape? We saw that these resentments must be mastered, but how? We could not wish them away any more than alcohol. This was our course. We realized that the people who wronged us were perhaps spiritually sick. Though we did not like their symptoms and the way these disturbed us, they, like ourselves, were sick too. We asked God to help us show them the same tolerance, pity and patience that we would cheerfully grant a sick friend. When a person offended, we said to ourselves, this is a sick man, how can I be helpful to him? God, save me from being angry, thy will be done. We avoid retaliation or argument. We wouldn't treat sick people that way. If we do, we destroy our chance of being helpful. We cannot be helpful to all people, but at least God will show us how to take a kindly and tolerant view of each other and everyone. Referring to our list again, putting out of our minds the wrong others have done, we resolutely looked for our own mistakes. Where had we, where had we been selfish, dishonest, self-seeking and frightened? Through a situation, though a situation had not been entirely our fault, we tried to disregard the other person involved entirely. Were we to blame? The inventory was ours, not the other man's. When we saw our faults, we listed them. We placed them before us in black and white. We admitted our wrongs honestly and were willing to set those matters straight. Now, this is one of my favorite passages. The list that it's referring to is um, some of the step work that we do um, while we're going through this program. And um, the step four part of the program is where you write down any wrongs or any resentments that you hold to other people or any wrongs that you've done to other people. And for me, that was a breakthrough when I was going through this um, to, to see writing on pen and paper and see my own handwriting and, you know, things that I'd done to others and perceived wrongs of others to me. I found that I could let go of all that resentments because once it's down in black and white, and then you go through your steps and you start to, we call them defects, and you start to realize what my personality defects are. You know, I'm, I'm self-centered and I'm intolerant. And the main two that I found really afflicted me. So by doing this, it helps you to put that aside and it helps you to enable more for my higher power to guide my thinking and my behavior and my attitude. And I can now help others. When, when I was um, in the madness of addiction, I would constantly argue with people, be aggressive towards people, you know, say horrible things to people. But those are the people that I was being horrible to were also sick. But now with this program and, and being recovering, I don't feel the need to do that. It's, it says, you know, how can I be helpful to him? 
I ask my higher power just to, to guide me. How am I going to help others? How am I going to help other addicts who are going through the same things we've all gone through? How can I reach out to them? And how can I pull you through to us, to the other side where you can live a life of hope, faith and courage? Because that's what we're here to do, to carry this message that you can recover and you, it is better. And we can, in this, this book helps. You know, we avoid retaliation or argument. That is groundbreaking because rather than flying off the handle about something, I can now take a step back. I can always say my serenity prayer and just take a step. And I don't react that knee jerk reaction to act so aggressively or arrogantly anymore. You know, we wouldn't treat sick people that way. It makes you realize that you can't treat people in a certain way, especially when they're sick. When you have an illness like addiction, you can't be treated with detest you know you can't detest them you have to try out reach out and you have to help them you know we, we can't destroy our chances of being helpful by being selfish and intolerant we need to get rid of those defects so when I read this paragraph in the book with my sponsor I really felt a freedom come from us you know we placed them before us in black and white we admitted our wrongs honestly and were willing to set those matters straight and that's when you go through and you make your amends and you, I, well, me personally, I apologize, had to apologize to friends and family for everything that I've done to them. But that set me free. It really did set me free. So um, I'll bring my part of the, the share to the end. But this for me was the absolute part pinnacle of my recovery once I'd been able to let those resentments go. And I've been able to make my amends. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks, Eve. That was beautiful. Ashley, come on in. Yeah, hi Paul. Thanks, Eve, for your share um, and the bit of bit of the reading that you just read. Um, yeah, f I mean, for me personally, you know, getting to that point of of um, you know handing it over and 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 looking at you know um, different angles of of how I can approach situations in regards to the. To the reading that was that was read um you know and and looking at you know these putting pen to paper and 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 doing the inventory that's that's required of us when we get to that stage um and that's something that i um you know i i do and 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 in you know try and implement that with with other people um you know coming into this so if there's anyone new listening to this and and you know wants to get an idea of, of what it's all about you know this is you know from from my experience it's it's the process of this you know this norm normality of where we get to of you know we're, where we're not you know we're not um we're, we're just at peace with everything um you know not forgetting that you know the peculiar mental twists and you know all the stuff that goes with the addiction and and, and things but for me I, I suppose I had to get to a place where it was just enough was enough um and just really wanting to know something different around my old thinking I suppose um but yeah that's that's a very good you know it's a very good portion of the book um you know I learned a lot from that personally and you know others can 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 get that and but also you know learn learn a bit from it but but yeah i'll um i'll leave it there paul thank you thanks so much ashley great to hear you thank you catherine hi catherine Addit. Uh, thank you so much for your share there eve um, it was really really beautiful um what i get from that is it's like the the being humble owning up to your mistakes and seeing what part you played in it um when we're holding on to resentments, we're just holding on to them for our, ourselves. We're not hurting anyone else other than ourselves. And it's it's like, how can I be helpful to the world and not what can I get out of the world? And it, yeah, doing doing the work on the columns is is a big eye opener. And I, I've I've shared this many times. It was like one of the best moments in my life where. I was able to see my part in things because in active addiction, it, oh, I was so self-absorbed. Um, everything was like, well, they've done this, they've done that. 
and and it fueled me and as I say the only person I continued to hurt was myself um I really like as well when it says we cannot be helpful to all people um it shows you know we we we're not perfect humans there are going to be people that we can't be um like best friends with um and it says we but at least we god will show us but at least god will show us how to take a kindly and to tolerant view of each and every one so it, it's telling us that you know we don't have to be best friends with everyone you know we're, we're still we're still human although we live by the 12 principles um yeah it's absolutely beautiful part of the book and um, you know resentments i've got written here in my, in my book with resentments block progression which is absolutely true isn't it you know we can't be at one with god when we're living in the past in in things that have happened you know they've they've happened and we've made our amends by working the wonderful program. Um, yeah, and just seeing what, what our part is and then turning it around and seeing what we can do to go and help someone else. It's a really beautiful way to live. Um, and yeah, I, I really feel like getting humble and admitting to myself my faults, my defects, is 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 where the magic happens um i know i've written my list of defects in in my big book and this it just comes to me to do it i didn't get suggested it and when i'm having off days which we do because you know we're not perfect humans i look at that list of resentments and that is the person i don't want to be um so turn it around, do the opposite to, to what my list of resentments are. Um, it seems to be working so far. And, you know, in the book, it also says, doesn't it, when these crop up, it, it, we, you know, they don't just all vanish overnight. It, it, it warns us, doesn't it, when they pop up. Um, but we've got a programme how to deal with, with it, which is absolutely wonderful. Um, yeah, takes. I know. I know by by doing this on a daily basis, it removes me from being in self, but self centered self pity is a massive one for me. Um, you know, all self. Yeah, all all the selfishness traits of a human. I can go into in in the click of a finger, but I can also come out of it by making amends when I've been cranky or when I've done something wrong or dishonest and yeah it's 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 like um it's it's like directions how to live a, a beautiful spiritual life where you are thinking of others more than yourself um and it and it it does work so I'll leave it there thank you Beautiful. Thank you so much, Catherine. Great to hear you. <clears throat> yeah, it's a great bit of the book. Thank you so much, Chief, for bringing that to us. And I'm just looking at it. Um, it's on the screen just now. You know, I think house cleaning, you know, living clean is, is much more than just being clean from drugs, including alcohol. You know, living clean means a clean heart. And one of the secrets to staying clean from drugs is to keep a clean heart and a clean mind. And it says there, um, just in the bit, before you read where the grouch and the brainstorm were not for us. There may be the dubious luxury of normal men and women, but for alcoholic addicts, these things are poisonous. You know, and just as there's a higher power, there's a lower power, you know, and many times you'll hear the personification of the lower power in the yang or alcoholism or the devil, um, and the higher power is God or spirit of the universe, creator. Um, you know, I was working with someone today and for them, the higher power is Bhagwan Swimari. Um, for me, it's the Lord Jesus Christ. But whatever your higher power is, most of us concede that there is a lower power. Um, and that lower power tries to attack us while we're clean and sober as well, the alcoholic reasoning. And, um, you know, it can come in the form of obsessive reasoning, resentment being the number one offender where we resend the mentality of something resentment we resend the mentality of something 
Uh, and, you know, instead of being loving and forgiving, we can be harsh and critical of others, and that's completely wrong, you know, and um, it's a great bit of the book. I'm really pleased that you've, you've mentioned it. Um, it's interesting. It talks about the mastery of resentment, um, and, and I think it, it would really be a case of building that relationship with God, the higher power, you know, and, and getting that wisdom and serenity and courage not to, to have that obsessive reasoning. And the reason why it's problematic is because for a long time we, we concluded that getting drunk or getting loaded was a workable, viable solution, you see. Whether we were happy or sad, we lived to use, used to live. An addict is someone whose whole life and thinking is centered in drugs, ways and means to get more. We lived to use and we used to live, or we lived to drink and we drank to live. And, um, you know, we don't live like that anymore. <clears throat> Pardon me, we, we keep a clean heart and a clean mind. Um, and, you know, when we're offended, we say to ourselves, this is a sick person. How can I be helpful to them? Save me from being angry. And, you know, I think I don't believe God tempts us, but I believe we're tested. Um, and I think working with others, it certainly keeps you on your toes. And uh, to seek the will of God, that's the great thing. To see wh what you can do for others every day, I think is a vital component of our <clears throat> wonderful suggestions of a face-to-face -face home group, an online home group, a commitment to reading a couple of pages of the literature every day, a commitment to our personal spiritual literature, a commitment to prayer morning, noon and night, a commitment to consistent step work, a commitment to good self-care, a minimum of two substantial conversations every day with folks in recovery. Everyone that I've seen take those simple suggestions has stayed clean. Um, so, so look, that's enough out of me. Without further ado, we'll keep things moving on to the next topic. And Ashley's got something from the big book that he's going to read and then share two or three minutes on. Over to you, Ashley. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Yeah, I'm Ashley. I'm a recovered drug addict. Um, yeah, I would like to pick out a vision for you. Um, yeah, so, you know, welcome, you know, to anyone that's listening or anyone that's new, that's, you know, wondering what, what the fellowship's about, or, you know, wants to get a bit of an insight on, on, you know, on, on some stuff around the 12 steps and addiction. So yeah, I'll start the vision for you. So yeah, Ashley recovered drug addict. Um, for most normal folks, drinking means conviv convivi conviviality, companionship, um, and colorful imagination. <clears throat> It means release from care, boredom, worry. It is joyous intimacy with friends and a feeling that life is good, but not so with us. In those last days of heavy drinking, the old pleasures were gone. They were but memories. Never could we recapture the great moments of the past. They were instant yearning to enjoy life as we once did and that heartbreaking obsession that some new miracle of control would enable us to do it there was always one more attempt and one more failure the less people tolerated us the more we withdrew from society from life itself as we become sub subjects of king alcohol and the shivering denizens of this mad realm and the chilling vapor that is loneliness settled down. It thickened over, it thickened ever becoming blacker. Some of us sought out our sordid places, hoping to find an understanding, companionship and approval. Momentarily, we did then would come the oblivion and that awful awakening to face the hideous four horsemen. Terror, bewilderment, frustration, despair unhappy drinkers who read this page will not understand so yeah I'll, I'll you know i'll just briefly share on what i've just read um you know for, for for me you know coming into the fellowship and and uh you know as a as a, as a newcomer and and wanting to you know understand what it what it is that keeps happening to me um you know, when I was presented with this, you know, with this chapter and, you know, 
getting more of an understanding of what actually goes on for for me, you know, in regards to this, you know, in in regards to this like insane insane idea that you know it just keeps happening. Like, and I, you know, and I personally, I, I wanted to stop. I, I didn't want to, you know, continue continue doing it. Um, you know, and that obsession just wouldn't leave me alone. Um, and it was just, you know, something that I didn't want to do. But yet, I I got in into a place where 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 this thought or this, you know, this idea that that using would be would be would be all right. Um, and like it says, the where I read, you know, the less people tolerated us, the more we withdrew from society, and and that's you know that's really what I wanted to do I suppose not what I wanted to do but that's just what happened to me when I used I didn't want to be a part of society or you know a part of the normality of you know the normal kind of work ordinary person that that can deal with with life you know in, in the normal sense so that you know for me it was it was about this idea that I really haven't got any kind of control over it and I can't stop it but but then reading you know coming into the fellowship and 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 I, and I you know I think I've shared it on a, on, on other platforms but you know I, I I really had to get to a place where I was I suppose I was beaten smashed whatever you know whatever you want to call it and and becoming more receptive and, um, you know, more of a, becoming more, um, uh, getting to an understanding of what it is that goes on for me and, and, and letting whatever I've got going on that I think that I can have some kind of, you know, control over it is, I had to kind of let that go and, and, and just look at, you know, what, what's on offer within within this cocaine anonymous and and the 12 step fellowship and 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 what I suppose once I got into that situation of being receptive and 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 you know and and finally surrendered around this you know this this stuff and 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 just really kind of you know putting my you know, Mark, because you know, anything that I want to do is just self-destruct, and I just you have to, you know, I get got to a place working through the steps. I, I, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was a, it was a, an amazing experience, and um, just that that part of handing it over and not really thinking that I have this under the under control, because um, I suppose anything that I've, you know, I, I've got anything you know anything that I think that I've got any control of with with addiction has just failed me uh so many times and and, and like I said I was just handing it over and and, and I, was, I got you know everyone's journey is different but I got into a place of just not really thinking of you know I've got to do all these things to you know once I'm in recovery and just letting it you know it takes a long while and I'm still learning now and this is the the beauty of it but it just letting things happen and you know letting the program you know kind of work you and 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 just letting these you know it's a natural process and 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 that you know that wanting to do this because you know I I that you know I wanted I wanted to do this and I you know, today I, I have some accountability for what I do and what I say and, you know, what, you know, what times I should, you know, stick to. And, and, and before that wasn't the case. And, and, and this is what this gives you. I, I, you know, this is what I'm convinced of. It gives you this, you know, this clear perception of, of, of life once you're at that stage where you you know you want you want this for yourself not for you know your family or your friends or you know you've got to want it for yourself and get to that point where you just cannot you know carry on the way that you that you're carrying on and that's just been my experience that I just wanted to do something different around alcohol and drugs and you know this seems to be the deal to be honest so you know if there's any newcomers listening um 
you know, I'd strongly suggest getting a sponsor and, you know, go through the chapters and see what you, um, you know, see what you relate to and see if you can match your experience within, within the book. Um, but yeah, I'll, um, I'll leave it there, Paul. Thank you. Good stuff, Ashley. Thanks for sharing. Catherine. Uh, thank you, Ashley. Um, wow, that is so, this, this part of the book, even though it's at the end, after all the work, um, it means so much to me. I, when I relapsed, I um, phoned a friend out at the fellowship. She said, get to a meeting. I was like, I can't, I can't face it. She said, get to the meeting. And, and we we just started, it ended up a really small meeting and we and we sat down, I broke down. I was like, I cannot carry on anymore. I can't do it. Um, wherever we was up to in the big book, she said, right, we're reading a vision for you. And the words just, you know, them two paragraphs, it, it, it just explains the absolute despair, hopelessness, awfulness that I was feeling that day. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know where I was going. I, I, I'd even lost the fight and the will to want to end my life. It was that bad. I just, I, I just didn't exist. And do you know, her reading this to me and giving me a hug made so much difference. Um, oh, there's so much in them two paragraph, paragraphs. The um, always one more attempt and one more failure, you know, um, says it all, doesn't it? You know, every, every attempt to try and fix yourself externally with drugs, with alcohol, it will fail. It really will fail. Um, withdrew from society. I, I, apart from like when I was in recovery, most of the last like seven years, it's just been me in four walls. And even if I was in a room full of people, I'd still be in this like cell of my mind. Um, you know, the loneliness was absolutely awful. Um, the chilling vapour that is loneliness settled down it thickened ever becoming blacker and do you know what I I like visualize it's, it's took me back to that that relapse and it's it's quite um you know the lights do go out it might be light outside but it's that dark in my head I can't see anything and you know it, it doesn't have to be like that you know, the four horsemen, terror, bewilderment, frustration, despair. Um, you know, for anyone who's, who's, who's feeling these things at the moment, I cannot suggest strongly enough to get involved in CA. You know, get a sponsor, work through the big book, do your steps, be honest with yourself um, and honest with a sponsor who's just someone who's... who's recovered from from alcohol or um you know drug addiction and connect with people had i not made friends in the fellowship and was able to reach out that day i don't know if i would have made it back um you know people in the rooms understand us you know they know you know, we all suffer with the illness of addiction they 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 know how you feel you know, we, our brains are different. Um, and yeah, oh, it's just brought back memories. Ha, I'm, I'm really happy because I made it back. And I know, unfortunately, people don't. Um, but I truly believe that day, you know, if I hadn't have connected, I don't know what would have happened. Because uh, I was saying, should I drive to hospital? What should I do? I do not know what to do. And you know what, well, that day, going that meeting and that beautiful lady sitting down and reading that has absolutely saved my life. And yeah, I'm so grateful to CA. So if anyone is struggling, just just give it a go. Um, you will never look back, I, I promise. So I'll leave it there. Thanks so much, Catherine. <clears throat> it's a great bit of the book, Ashlyn. It's got me thinking, you know, it, it talks there about um, conviviality, companionship and colourful imagination. 
you know and for many persons when they start out their using and boozing career is great fun our partners are there we've got money in the bank car perhaps a motorcycle a dog you know a, a home a big stereo and it's party on we've got our health and our sanity perhaps our jobs but for many of us we end up on our own with the curtains closed the doors locked um, paranoid about any kind of noise with ever increasing consequences unable to face the reality of consequences uh, unable to find a solution for the consequences and the only solution we have is a delusional uh, suicide on the instalment plan known as active addiction and so then we realize that the solution we had for ourselves and for experience and feelings was a solution that was slowly killing us uh, preceded by months and years of carnage catastrophe and chaos for our, those around us as well as ourselves and then we need a real solution you know and that's where the 12 steps of recovery come in you know, a daily program of action and working with others and staying connected. Um, you know, but it's been my experience as well that many folks, that is exactly, uh, you know, what happens to them. It's all fun at the beginning, but the consequences build up, you know, and, um, you know, I was talking to a dear member today um, about this very issue, about how, um, you know, the reality is that we were locked in a cycle of living to use, using to live, self-medicating. And when we're in an altered state, the consequences didn't seem to matter that much. But when it wears off, the consequences rarely, if ever, got better and very often incrementally, albeit, got worse. Uh, and then the old, the old solution was there again, we'll get high or get drunk. And the consequences just ever worsened, you know, and we would wake up with these poor horsemen of terror bewilderment, frustration, and despair. So it is a great bit of the book, and I'm really thankful that you brought that, Ashley. Um, you know, and, you know, I maintain that step one, when worked properly, is the most difficult step. Uh, I can understand why in Narcotics Anonymous they spend over four weeks on step one. I also understand what folks mean when they say, well, coming to a meeting is step one. But for me to work step one properly is at least a couple of hours of a job with a sponsor and at least a couple of hours of personal study and pen to paper. And I think it's very important to get honest uh, around consequences, you know, to get honourable with yourself about the reality of active addiction and where it takes us. But anyway, that's enough out of me. Over to you, um, Eve. Thank you. Um, yeah, I love this these two paragraphs epitomize what it's like really to be an addict um you know from, from my personal experience started drinking from a young age so love going out with my mates partying getting absolutely off my face um and it was great when it was good it was good you know um until the old you know the old pleasures were gone they were but memories never could we recapture the great moments of the past well no we can't because when you become utterly transformed into this madness, you don't enjoy it anymore. You're just doing it, not because you even you want to anymore, you just need to. Your brain and your body can't seem to function without it. And it makes me really emotional reading this bit because it just, it just brings back all that absolute exhaustion and that, it, well it is utter despair in my life the darkest of dark times um but my sponsor um gave me some absolutely incredible advice um which anyone can do you don't you know necessarily have to be going through the steps um to do it but she said to me what I want you to do is sit down get a pad of paper and a pen don't type it out you need to write it down in your handwriting and think about what you're going to write sit down and write all your feelings and any words that come to mind when you're in the pits of despair on a come down after you've been on a binge how do you feel and I wrote it down on a piece of paper all these words you know that I, it takes when even now if I have you know an intrusive thought to to maybe pick up just one drink or something I get it out and I read it because it takes me back to that point of my life where I didn't even want to be alive anymore you know it was just horrendous and if, if there is anybody listening to this who is going through that at the moment and 
you can't you you you're listening to this to see what we're about write down how you're feeling and then it helps you to remember why you never want to go back there and you don't want to do that because those old pleasures are gone you are never going to feel again like you did the first time you ever picked up a drink or a drug those days are gone you know and there is a way to survive there's a way to to live a life a, a full complete happy life without any of that We've, we've managed that. We can do it. You can do it too. If you just would like to give it a go, you know, come and have a look to see what the fellowship's about. There's no reason to be hunted by those four horsemen anymore. You can get armor against it. You'll have people, fellows that you will get on with and you will connect with. You'll hear them in a meeting or something and you will make friends and those friends will be friendships for life. If you engage and you come, but you know, it says unhappy drinkers who read this page will understand. And if this reaches out to you, I really, as, as Catherine said, I implore you, please reach out to us because we can help. You can recover. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be, you know, king alcohol or whatever drug of your mad realm. Come live a life full of real hope faith and courage more importantly live a life <laughs> I always say this program gave me back my life but it gave me something I could never imagine be on my wildest dreams of having a life and I'll um I'll leave it there because this does make me um a bit emotional because it just take you back but thank you Ashley because that's an absolutely amazing part of the book beautiful thanks so much for sharing Eve Catherine, Catherine's got a portion out of the big book and then she's going to share for a couple of minutes on it. Come on in. Hi, yes, Catherine, a recovered addict. So I'm going to read from We Agnostics and it's page 50. So here, here are thousands of men and women, worldly indeed. They flatly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves, to take a certain attitude towards that power, and to do certain simple things, there has been a revolutionary change in their way of living and thinking. In the face of collapse and despair, in the face of total failure of their human resources, they found that a new power, peace, happiness, and sense of direction flowed into them. This happened soon after they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. Once confused and baffled by the seeming futility of existence, they show the underlying reasons why they were making heavy going of life. Living aside the drink question, they tell, sorry, they tell why living was so unsatisfactory. They show how the change came over them when many hundreds of people are able to say that the consciousness of the presence of God is today the most important fact of their lives, they present a powerful reason why one should have faith. So um, it kind of ties in with the, the last reading, actually. When, when I went through this after a relapse, you know, that, that paragraph just shouted out at me. And, um, you know, it's, you know, you just need to believe in that power greater than yourself and, you know, have a simple attitude towards that power. Um, I found when I fully surrendered to the fact that I can't do this, I can't run the show, I've been doing this for a couple of decades and it's not working. Why not try something different? You know, it's, 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 it's just, it's so beautiful. I get really emotional. Um, and there's been a revolutionary change in my way of living and my way of thinking. You know, I'm just not the person that I was in addiction. Um, like like said earlier, you know, it's all about how I can contribute to the world. How can I make even just one person's day a little bit brighter? Um, how I can show up as me, you know, before doing all this work, I couldn't bear being in my own skin. I was full of resentment, 
but more so full of fear. And I was, I was terrified. And, you know, going through the simple programme, because it is a really simple programme. It does require a lot of action, but it's dead easy to understand. And, you know, underlying reasons why I was making a heavy going of life, you know, you know, my step four and step five, that dealt with that. Leaving aside the drink, so, you know, it wasn't the, it wasn't for me, it was like cocaine that was my main problem. So putting that aside, because that was just the symptom. I, coming into the fellowship, I, I, I thought that was, that was the problem. And, and my word, it was a problem. The consequences were so severe, but it wasn't the root problem. I had to find out my true inner self, what it was that was blocking me from being able to live a life and the program you know unfolded all that it, it's it's an absolute miracle how it works you know the change came over them hundreds of people were able to say that that the consciousness of god is today the most important fact in their life i would never admit to that because i was still in myself i was still in Catherine's ego but now you know by by letting this God that for me personally, this, you know, God's it within me. When when everything's good internally for me, everything outside reflects back good. You know, my thoughts, if I give power to negative thoughts in my head, and that when I'm in self-will, I will do that. I will give power to these thoughts that turn into actions, that turn into a reality. But when I'm when I'm like God conscious and living that way of life, you know, I can let these thoughts go. Thoughts come and go. They, they're just thoughts. And it says, doesn't it? It, it? So many people have recovered by having a God in the life. You know, why, why, we, why we should have faith? Because it works. It's worked for so many people. And I really hope if, if this message, you know, if someone's a bit worried about the God word, you know, it's just a power greater than yourself. Like I said, my power was chaotic. My power was awful. Um, but God's power is beautiful. It's kind. It's loving. It's nurturing. And I'm finding that my outside world is reflecting back. I I was terrible for seeking externally to fix myself internally. It never happened, you know. I've been in psychiatric units, and the, the you know the chaos and the se severity of my my using was awful. It was so so like it was affecting so many people, and it's not like that now. People like my mum, God bless her. She like says she's proud of me now, and that is all I've ever wanted. She says she loves me. It's all I've ever wanted, and this program has brought that to me. Um, yeah. So as I said before, if if you're on the edge and you you're thinking should I should I just give it a go. You won't lose by by giving it a go. I promise you. Thank you. Beautiful. Thanks, Catherine. A beautiful bit of the book. Thanks for your share as well. <clears throat> Yeah, I think um, for many persons that come in, you, you know, using the group as higher power works very well in the first instance. You know, in my experience, a lot of persons that come into the rooms are very confused uh, about the creator, very confused about God um, and just generally very confused. You know, and the gate is, is a welcoming gate to everybody. You know what I mean? Anyone can get and stay clean here, whatever they believe. You know, we're not a synagogue or a church or a mosque. But about alcoholism, the problem and recovery, the solution. Having said that, we do talk about God a lot. And it's clear from the steps he's talking about God, the creator. Um, you know, tradition two, for example, says uh, for our group purpose, there is but one ultimate authority, a loving God, as he may express himself in our group conscience. And the idea of accountability um, I think is a central feature of these steps, the idea that we're accountable to somebody. Um, I think it's a huge issue. 
I think in step one, we, we become accountable to ourselves and to God. Um, we get honest and transparent about the consequences. Uh, and that's a very empowering thing. Uh, because if we pick up again, we make that choice to pick up drugs again, then we're, in, we're being dishonest about the reality of our consequences. Uh, and I think through this process, you know, we experience ego deflation, um, you know, and, and a measure of emotional maturity comes in that we, we call sobriety, which, which is much more than, than simply being physically sober from drinking drugs. Um, you know, it says there, take a certain attitude towards that power. And I'm, I'm going to have to ask us all to just spend a couple of minutes sharing back going forward because we're kind of, um, we've still got 10 minutes or so yet, but just to let everybody know if we could do that. And I'm going to wrap it up in a moment with these last couple of thoughts for my part. Um, you know, the idea is a divine resource. It says, in the face of the total failure of human resources, they found a new power, peace, and happiness and direction flowed into them. Uh, they wholeheartedly met a few simple requirements. And, uh, you know, I mentioned, I mentioned them earlier, um, you know, consistent step work, commitment to literature, home groups, um, working with others, substantial conversations about recovery every day, um, accountability, prayer, meditation you know, inventory, these things, um, you know, it's a wonderful thing. And it says there, once confused and baffled by the seeming futility of existence, we do find purpose, connection, expression, you know, through this program. And um, I think I'll just leave it there and, um, and pass it over to you, Eve. Thank you, Paul. Um, and thank you, Catherine. I, I do this, I adore this part. Of the, well, I adore all the book, but these passages tonight have really been really hard hitting ones. Um, you know, when I, I, cause at first, of course, I, I struggled with uh, believing in a higher power greater than myself. Um, cause as far as I was concerned, God had never, you know, a higher power had never done anything for me in my life. You know, why was I where I was? Why was I an addict, you know, just completely off my head all the time. What had I done to deserve that? That was my view on it. And uh, I sat down and had a conversation with my mom. And um, my mom just said, you know, pretty bluntly, well, if you, because, you, you know, I always used to say, I don't believe in God. So my mom turned around and was like, well, you say you don't believe in God. So how can you blame something you don't believe in for all the problems you've had in your life? And how about instead of blaming something, you turn that around and you start trusting in it instead? And that really, that was just like a big kind of like, what? God, okay, right. I suppose you've got a point moment. Um, and because of what she said to me, that inspired me more. Um, and, you know, it, it says here, in the face of collapse and despair, in the face of total failure of their human resources, they found a new power, peace, happiness, and a sense of direction flowed into them. And that is exactly what happened to me when, as soon as I decided to it's all for me it was almost like a switch being hit in my head that that moment I was sat with my mom and I decided to go okay and I truly prayed for the first time really ever I'd not praying oh you know let me get more drugs let me get more, you know not playing paying for selfish means and things I just prayed that I could feel their presence you know if you're really there can you just let me feel that are you you know are you there and I just had this so surreal sense of calm just come over me it was insane <laughs> it, it sounds it doesn't sound real but it was and then and, and after that you know ever since I had that moment and everything clicked with this program and I worked at it but ever since I had that first sense of calmness just seep into me I've had the compulsion to use and to drink lifted sometimes I still my brain tries to convince me it would be a good idea to go and get a bottle of wine because like you know Catherine said we were not perfect and we still have really bad days but because of the help of this fellowship I won't do that 
I had a struggle I had a you know I've had a couple of, of times where I've kind of almost written myself but rather than letting that that intrusive thought win instead now I can help I can reach out and I get help from a higher power and the fellowship it's like Paul said earlier as well about your higher power they 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 kind of you know they they do they they can seem to test you sometimes but without those dark moments still we might forget that we are addicts and without having those intrusive thought what happens if you forget and you think you're you're okay and you can just have that one drink you're back you're straight back out there so I believe we need those kind of moments of weakness to teach us to pray to reach out to a higher power to teach us to reach out when we need to we need to be taught to understand triggers we need to be taught uh, you know that we need to make sure that we're keeping check of our behavior and our actions and those little tests come along once in a while to properly keep you on the right track and you if you can let go and let your higher power just take control oh my god my life is so smooth now it's not a fight every day I am not battling with exhaustion and horror and just conflict all the time because I just hand it over and I say, here you go, uh, this happened, you know, these, this is my part in it and now I'm going to hand it over to you, God, here you go. And he takes that from me every night and I don't carry stuff into the next day. Um, but I'll leave it there. But if anyone is struggling with God or anything else, feel free to reach out to us. There are a lot of people in here who know a lot about it and they, they will be able to help. Excellent stuff. Thank you. Ashley, would you like to come in for a minute or two on this passage that's on the screen? Yeah, thanks, Paul. Um, yeah, thanks, Catherine, for reading that part of the book. Yeah, I'm Ashley. I'm a recovered drug addict. Um, yeah, you know, coming into the rooms and getting into this part of the book and, you know, getting, you know, as a newcomer, you know, getting into an understanding of what it's about, the, the that they're speaking about and you know for me where it says you know at the top um here are thousands of men and women worldly indeed they flatterly declare that since they have come to believe in a power greater than themselves um to take a certain attitude towards that power and to do certain and to do certain simple things there has been a revolutionary change in the way of living and thinking um you know, and I think that's been my experience that I've got out of this, I've got out of alcoholism, addiction, and, you know, going through the steps of, and, and tapped into this, you know, this power, you know, that can restore that thinking and that deluded way of being as a person to some kind of normality around questioning the first one. And that, was never possible I could ne I could never imagine that that would be possible for me to do going forward but you know putting some you know like it says you know um to take a certain attitude and that certain attitude was just to be you know honest and 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 to have that you know to, to be on point with all of this not to not to you know, if you, you know, for me, if I really wanted to get to do something, it's, it's, it's doing it. It's that, you know, putting something into play and actually doing it. And that's, you know, that's what, what's on offer here is, 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 is just to put some action in around the things that, that I wasn't doing. Um, and, and having, you know, having that ability to be restored to sanity, you know, over that thought of using and that's the beauty of this you know I can't you know it's not to be messed about with I don't think because for me you know if, if thoughts always come and go it's natural I suppose but especially around that thought of using substances and to have some kind of normality and to be restored around that is is cool you know and and, and you know if there's a newcomer or anyone listening to this that's struggling you know this this is potentially where you know we can we can get to and we can you know we can now you know just carry this on to to you know people that that struggle but but yeah I'll, I'll leave it there Paul thank you good stuff Ashley thanks so much for sharing um so I'm going to read a bit from page 10 of Bill's story um <clears throat> so it's this bit here 
it's on the screen. It's quite a long reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read it and then share very, very briefly and then invite everyone to spend a maximum of two minutes each to share on it. Um, so I'd always believed in a power greater than myself. I'd often pondered these things. I was not an atheist. Few people really are. So that means blind faith in the strange idea that this universe originated in a cipher and aimlessly rushes nowhere. My intellectual heroes, the chemists, the astronomers, even the evolutionists, suggested vast laws and forces at work. Despite, despite contrary indications, I had little doubt that a mighty purpose and rhythm underlay all. How could there be so much of precise and immutable law and no intelligence? I simply had to believe in a spirit of the universe who knew neither time nor limitation. But that was as far as I'd gone. With ministers and the world religions, I parted right there. When they talked to a God personal to me, who was love, superhuman strength and direction, I became irritated and my mind snapped shut against such a theory. To Christ, I conceded the certainty of a great man, not too closely followed by those who claimed him. His moral teaching most excellent. For myself, I had adopted those parts which seemed convenient and not too difficult. The rest I disregarded. The wars which had been fought, the burnings and chicanery that religious disputes had facilitated made me sick. I honestly doubted whether on balance the religions of mankind had done any good at all. Judging from what I'd seen in Europe and since, the power of God in human affairs was negligible. The brotherhood of man, a grim jest. If there was a devil, he seemed to be the boss universal. The wily, vile, devil. He seemed to be the boss universal, and he certainly had me. But my friend sat before me and he made the point blank declaration that God had done for him what he could not do for himself. His human will had failed. Doctors had pronounced him incurable. Society was about to lock him up. Like myself, he'd admitted complete defeat. Then he had, in effect, been raised from the dead, suddenly taken from the scrap heap to a level of life better than the best he'd ever known. Had this power originated in him? Obviously it had not. There'd been no more power in him than there was in me at that minute, and this was none at all. That floored me. It began to look as though religious peoples were right after all. Here was something at work in a human heart which had done the impossible. My ideas about miracles were drastically revised right then. Never mind the musty past. Here sat a miracle directly across this Zoom room. Eve, Catherine and Ashley. And they shout glad tidings. Glad tidings of joy and peace and gladness that an addict, any addict, can quit using, lose the desire to use, and find a new way to live. Glad tidings of joy and peace and freedom and well-being. Is it easy? Not necessarily. Does it always feel wonderful? No. Is it doable? Yes. Anyone can lose that desire to use and find a new way to live. And that has been my experience, you know. I, I personally uh, know men and women that were living homeless, you know, injecting drugs, living out of the spoon and the pipe every day, many times a day for years, for, de for decades that are free today. You know, I, I have a brother and sister in mind right now that have now got over two years each of continuous sobriety that are in a terrible, terrible state. You know, I've been privileged to know many, many miracles, uh, you know, who've managed to, to get long-term sobriety one day at a time. Um, and I'll just leave it there. And now if we could go around and take a minute or two and, and I'll just ping you a message if we're going over um, for time. So let me see who, who is next. Um, Eve. Thank you, Paul. Yeah. Um... This is such an important part of the book, Bill's story, because um, really it's, it's our story, it's all of our story. Um, 
there's not one person in CA who hasn't read this and thought, God, that's me. Oh, you know, and, and it all comes back. Um, but where he says in here, but my friend sat before me and he made the point blank de declaration that God had done for him what he could not do for himself. Now, I've got that underlined there because uh, without my higher powers help, I'd still be a mess because um, now I don't live within my own will. I can hand things over. I don't have to be in control. Eve's world is a bad, silly little world. But now I have opened a possibility to a higher power. And, you know, had this a power originated in him, well, in me, <laughs> no, because otherwise I wouldn't have been doing what I was doing. Um, but one of my favorite lines in this whole book is just on the next page on page 12, where it says, my friend suggested that when th that then seemed a novel idea, he said, why don't you choose your own conception of God? And to me, that's one of the most important lines in this book, because for any newcomers that might be listening, you don't have to believe in a God that someone else believes in. You can make your own conception of what you want your God to be. As long as you can believe in a higher power with all your heart and if you feel their presence, which you will do, then that's all you need. Um, and I'll leave it there because I'm conscious of time and um, so others can come in to share back. Ashley. Yeah, cheers, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for the reading. Yeah, Ashley, um, recovered drug addict. Um, yeah, you know, the, I think the bit that stuck out for me was that uh, where where it says, you know, if there was a devil, he seemed the boss universal, and he certainly had me. But my friend sat me sat my friend sat before me. And he made the point blank declaration that God had done for me what he could not do for himself. His human will had failed. Doctors had pronounced him incurable. And, and, and you know, my experience around that is that, you know, a lot, you know, in, in the addiction mindset it is, is just a bedevilment of, of self-destruct, you know, you know, torturing and terrorizing people around this but what you know what where it turns it all around and, and you can make this you know this positive movement around this stuff is you know where it said that you know but my friend sat before me and he'd made the point blank blank declaration that god had done for me what he could not do for himself and i think going forward this is what you know we're all trying to get well on the on the on the in the 12 steps and you know, we're all trying to reach the same the same goal. So, you know, if there is any newcomers that are listening to this and, you know, wanting some insight on some information around this stuff, you know, get get yourself a sponsor and, um, you know, just have that willingness to, 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 to have a better life and to make others, you know, get well as well. But, yeah, I'll leave it there, Paul. Thank you. Thanks, Ashley. Catherine? I um yeah, thank you for reading that part. And it's the same paragraph that absolutely jumps out to me. You know, society was about to lock him up. I got locked up. I was that insane. I actually got had to get locked up away from society. Um we, it was horrific. Um and he had to complete it, complete admitted complete defeat and you know what that's that's your step one when you commit the com oh, sorry can't get my words out when you admit complete defeat that you can't do this anymore is when uh, I think it's earlier in the book it, it talks about from darkness to dawn and that's how I that's how I felt my world gradually got lighter and lighter um I wasn't carrying around the the wreckage of my past, um, taken, raised from the dead. I truly believe I have been raised from the dead. You know, the addict Catherine was a dead person, just walking around, just existing. You know, through through working these steps, I have come alive. And you know what? I'm living the best life I could ever have imagined for myself. You know, when I go back to what I, what I wanted when I was a little, little girl, I've got now. And I am so grateful to CA, 
to my sponsor, to my friends in the fellowship and to God for raising me from the dead and giving me the life I've got today. And you, it's, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful way of living. So just please, if you're struggling, please just give it a go. Thank you. Thanks so much, Catherine. And thanks to you too, Ashley and Eve. It's been a pleasure being here with you this evening. So we've come to the end of today's podcast, family. Um, stay strong, stay connected. Uh, it is possible to lose the desire to use and find a new way to live. On the screen at the moment, I've got a meetings list. Um, we strongly suggest that you find yourself a face-to-face -face home group if possible uh, and an online home group. A home group is a meeting you attend regularly, get to know the folks there, and you can perhaps do service there. Um, on the screen right now, all the ones in blue are on every single day. So if you, and everyone's welcome at any of the Zoom meetings, whatsoever country you reside in. Uh, but these are all UK times. If you look at the top left underneath the pink box, the Breakfast Club is on every morning at 7.30. Great Gratitude, 9.30. Pop-up Recovery, 10.30. We Can Recover, it was a meeting where Eve and Ashley and I often attend. And Catherine, um, 2 p.m., 8 p.m. and 9.30 every day. And then daily reprieve at the top right is also on at 9.30, reaching out uh, over in the middle of the far right column, reaching out on every night at 11, to Zana every night at midnight. So there's lots and lots of meetings, you know, stay connected. Um, I just want to take this opportunity to thank the three of you for coming along. It's really been a pleasure listening to you. Um, so thanks, Ashley. Yeah, thank you, Paul. Thanks for the opportunity. And um, yeah, it's been brilliant. Thank you. Top man. Thanks, Catherine. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. It's been an absolute pleasure and privilege to do this. Brilliant. And Eve, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me and for letting me be a part of this and just giving some service back to this amazing fellowship that saved my life. Brilliant. Okay, family, stay safe, stay strong, stay in the solution and check out the other broadcasts on all the steps, the entire psychic change, the spiritual malady, the ABCs of addiction. We've got about 14 personal stories on this channel, so stay connected. Until next time, bye-bye.